Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Endless Runner. So in this one, we actually create some gameplay prefab that can be instantiated one after the other to actually create a path. So as you can tell, this is a single object. This is another one and this is another one. So we can simply spawn them in the middle of our game and then just say, say this one. And then it just keep going like that independently. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we've been playing with this plane for quite a while now, but we're gonna remove it today. We're actually going to start making what we've called prefab. So these are the tiles that are going to be randomly generated as we move along the level. So we are going to create some prefab. So guys, this is going to be a little bit different for every single one of us. But in my case, I also I have my assets already, so I have some models that I can use and they have colliders. But I will go ahead and just make one um, prefab using primitives object so, so you can actually do this if you don't have assets. So what's going to happen basically is we need to create prefab that is going to start right here from the origin and then we can also calculate the length. So um, what I'll do first is I'll just, I'll just create a plane like this then move it at the origin and then move it minus 5 so minus 5 in Z right here and I can start creating my prefab starting from that very point over there. So now what I mean by prefab is um, actually you gotta create tiles that you're able to spawn. So these tiles are going to need to have all the exact same size and you can have as many tiles as you wish. So I will show you what I mean with actual um, prefab. So under my prefab object, I'll go under the here, create a new folder that I call tiles and we're gonna go ahead and just start creating some tiles so say we create a cube we make sure that it's, it pretty much just starts from there so this point and make sure you really point on so in this case I'll be moving this to 0 0.5 and now I can extend it um, say in Z and I'll have to modify the Z again but that's fine so move it this way and this needs to be on 5 so I pretty much got a 10 meter long um, tile right here and I will also move it down because it also needs to be on this very level right here so all you gotta tell yourself is um, would the player be able to walk on it from its initial position like this this would actually work this could be a, a prefab right there so I could be taking this, this cube here, and I could be naming this a tile one. So that would be it right there. And then once I'm done making one tile, I can simply grab it, then drag and drop it inside of my tiles folder that I've just created. And that's one right there. Now you could also copy this and then say this would be tile number two, just a little bit bigger. But all you can make sure really is that they all have the same exact length and that if you put them uh, one, one next to each other like this, then it actually makes sense and you can actually create a level like that. So just imagine yourself that you're instantiating a random prefab from your list. So that's your list down here. And um, does it make sense? So can this prefab be put after this one? And as you can tell, this would actually work. So if we press play, our player can actually play with this. He can go left, right here, and so on. Now, you gotta be really careful too, because if you make like um, small, small tiles like this one, and say we're gonna make a tile number three that is like this, that is only say on the on the left side, that's tile number three, then if you put if the system just uh, randomly generates tile number one, then this is what we get. In the game, this is not going to work because our player cannot go from this one to this one without some kind of jump mechanic, which we don't have. So you gotta make sure that at the end of this tile or at the beginning of this one, it's actually wide and uh, you can actually do something with this. 
So end off with these tiles, I would just go ahead and grab the one I have, um, my models. So if you have any models, that's that's the time to actually take them out. It's under floors, bridges, so that's what I'll be using. I'll be using some nice bridge like this. Moving it at the origin, just making sure, and that's important for um, all the other tiles as well. Just make sure that your object is on 0, 0, 0 and it makes sense. Now in this case, if I put my object on 0, 0, 0, it actually looks like this and that's not that's not something I can spawn, right? So I will create a new game object, a empty game object, put it at 0, 0, 0 and then put the bridge as a children of that object. And I'll call this um, tile1. You could actually give it better name, so maybe tile underscore normal bridge. Now this has to be on 0, 0, 0 and then I can move the object beneath it and this can be pretty much anything so I'll just go ahead and move it so it makes sense with my character like so like this so that's exactly where the bridge should be so it is exactly on the good point right there and if I just uh, randomly generate another bridge oops, this is what I'm going to get it can actually be connected it can actually work okay but now um, if you're using your own model you're gonna need to figure out how big is a tile so in my case right here it is, so that's 10 meter right here, and that's 11, that's 12. It is actually 12 meter long, so mine is 12 meter. And let's just go ahead and save this one. So I'll just drag and drop it under the tile folder. There we go. Now I know that this is 12 meter. This is going to be useful information for the, uh, for the next episode. But we can just go ahead and just create some more. Make sure they all have the same length. So that was my first bridge. Now I'm going to change the name for say props on bridge that I have to avoid. So maybe if I go inside of my folder, I've got some models, some prefab decoration I can use. So let's go and put some cargo plank on there. Okay, so I'll have to avoid all the colliders you see there on this bridge. So my character will have to go on the very left to actually cross this. Right, and maybe move this one a little bit inward like so. And that would be one of my prefab right here. So as you can look right here, if you want to cross this spot, then the player absolutely need to be on the left side of the bridge. So now I can take this, this cargo plank, put it under my bridge, and save my new prefab. So now I have, um, if I remove everything, now I have this one, the props and bridge, and I also have the normal bridge. Both of them can be spawned, and if we put them one after the other, it should make sense, like so. And I'll just go ahead and make a few more, so I'm pretty much just satisfied with what I have, so maybe some tiles right there again in the middle or actually you know what like this and then I copy this over rotate it and put another one there so my player is going to have um, to go from left to right in a single bridge like this so I could be calling this tile underscore double rubble I don't know something like that doesn't really matter the name in the end are never really going to be used. We just need to put all of them inside of a prefab later on. So guys, make as much prefab as you wish. Also, um, the only rule you got to follow is that if you put them um, one after the other after the same exact length, so in this case after 12 meter, as you can tell up here, it makes sense. So say I spawn a props and bridge. This is going to be on 0, 0, 24 because that's 12 times 2. And then uh, we can do that again. So 0, 0, 0, 36, which is 12 times 4. And if we hit play now, we're going to get some kind of glitch here at the beginning. That's normal. 
and then I can go right here and everything makes sense. Alright guys, so that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something or if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Really appreciate that. If you have any comment or question, you can also leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So guys, I'll see you in the next episode.